Happy Wednesday, everybody. It's been a while since I've done a Wednesday video. I thought it was about time to get back to this. So today, what I want to look at is some things that we are adding for the next version of Nest Maker uh, for both Mystic Searches and for you guys uh, to use in the tool uh, in the next version. Uh, one thing, uh, let me show you the problem that we were having, and it's not really a problem. It's just a design choice. Um, let me show you Mystic Origins real quick. Um, so. Here's Mystic Origins. Now, some of you guys might know a lot about other projects that we're working on. Mystic Origins was basically uh, the game that all this uh, exists because of. We were creating a game called Mystic Searches. Mystic Searches is why the New Ape Heroes existed. It's why the Nest Maker tools came into being. Uh, Mystic Searches was moving along just fine. And right about the time that we finished the film, we realized, wow, if we spent some time working on our uh, Mystic Search's screen tool and game engine, that's what it was called at the time, we could actually have uh, a much broader game, much uh, much more capable game, uh, tell the narrative that we really want to tell, but it was going to take some work. So we cut off where we were and we made our finished nest game called Mystic Origins uh, that was more comparable in size and scope to to what we originally planned, but knew that we could do so much more that we would eventually call Mystic Searches. So that's what Mystic Origins is. Um, in Mystic Origins, a uh, nice little top-down adventure game, to get to our inventory, I press the select button. And you saw it faded out and faded up in inventory. And this is pretty common for NES games. You know, Zelda, you press the start button and it brought down the inventory screen. You press start, it went back up. This, you press select, it goes back to the normal game. And this is fine. But we had some other uses uh, of things that we wanted to pop up on the screen. Uh, not only that, this sort of pauses the game. It takes away from the game. Um, you're not looking at the screen anymore. It feels like this is a disconnected screen from the rest of the game. And so in thinking about what we needed for Mystic Searches, in thinking about what we were working on with Game Request for Rob McCallum, in thinking about what you guys might need for, say, different types of modules, the RPG module, or, you know, just, just different, different ways that you could bring up uh, data to show, HUD, pop-up displays, uh, text boxes, things like that. We wanted to create a different solution for this. So that's sort of where the quote-unquote problem started, even though I don't really consider it much of a problem. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to make we're going to do a entirely different way of creating a box uh, and a pop-up display that's going to work a lot more like how the text boxes work. So the first thing I'll show you is the end result of what we were what we wanted to change this to. So this is a version of the over here. Here's a version of our sort of Mystic Searches playground here. And here, uh, if I press the select button, you can see the crystal ball comes down and all the magic types that you have access to pop up like that. And that's really cool. And it feels more like it's part of the game, like that crystal ball descends. It draws more attention to that. And in order to get the other items and things that you want, um, you can bring up this sub menu, which brings up the relics and the items. Now, yours doesn't have to say relics. And all the things that we do today are going to say relics and items because it's sort of hard coded in the Mystic Searches engine. And that's what I'm going to show you. But you can have this say or show whatever you want that fits within the constraints. Um, so that's what we're going to be looking at. And one of the things I want you guys to notice, first of all, is if I press, if I open that up, uh, you notice there was a bush under there. And if I slash the bush and I bring it up again, that bush actually stays slashed. And if we want to take a look at what's happening, I can bring up, uh, oops, not that. I can bring up, sorry, the picture processing unit. And what's going to happen is, and this is why this method won't work on scrolling games. We have to come up with other slightly different methods for that. If I bring up that menu, you can see, well, let me restart this game. It'll be a little bit easier to see. There we go. Okay, so you see nothing is over here on the second name table that's loaded. But if I bring up the inventory... It backed up all of the data for this screen to over here. It backed up all the tile set data and all the attribute data. And when I restore it, it pulls exactly what's over here and puts it back in place over the top of that of that text box. So that's really cool. Um, the same thing happens with uh, with text boxes. 
and you can see it restored that. So whatever changes I might make for with like destructible terrain, that stays permanent and and uh, doesn't doesn't uh, re revert to the tile set of the name table when I loaded the screen. Uh, instead, it stays permanent, which is a really cool thing. Um, but let's talk about how we can make that happen in our game. So I made a copy of this entire folder, and we're going to work out of that version right here. And you can see I've got this create box code right here, and it's in basically the B button input. And it's got a lot of things in here that happen, and some of those things are showing the sprites, and some of those things are showing that text for relics and items. But just to make a box, it's still going to say relics and items on the screen if I do this, but just to make the box, I'm going to hit Control C, and I'm going to come up to the top here, and I'm going to hit Control V, and now it's going to ignore all this stuff, and it's just going to do this stuff when I press the B button, which is create the box and then return from the subroutine. So let's take a look. The first thing I've got is the X origin, the Y origin, the width, the height, and the box contents. And this is this is where um, we have some hard coded things set right now. But uh, let's say I want to make a two uh, a box that's at two two, so it's at the top left sort of corner ish of the screen, and I want to make it just too wide and too tall. <coughs> we'll get a little square box when I press the B button now. And it's that easy to make a box at the position and the size that you want. And there it is. And you can see I still have it saying relics. I still have it saying items. Um, you saw the sprites flicker because all that's handled in the rest of this code. Um, so, But you do see I made that two by two box. Now, obviously, we need it wider. Okay, no problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the width, which is argument 0, 1, 2, and I'll make it six wide. Save that. And test that. So the idea is it is a ton of flexibility to make these sort of boxes. Oops, sorry. I meant to do that. Um, you can see there it is, six wide. And if I want to make it tall so that it comes down and covers items as well, um, I want to deal with the height. So let's make that six. Save it. And forgot I only have to press B right now. I made this so it happens whenever I press B. So there we go. And now I've got it six by six. All right, so that's how easy it is to make a box. I'm gonna erase this piece of code so that it actually creates the box that I want it to create um, right here, which is four wide, or it starts at four, four, it's seven wide, and it's uh, 10 boxes, uh, 10 tall, 10 tiles tall. Um, and it creates sprites. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the box that you saw me create in the other version. And then we're going to talk about how we can populate that box with different things. In this case, we're going to look at sprites. So I bring that box up, and there we go. And it's already got one sprite in it. So let's talk about what's happening there. Uh, in this code, this is my pre-draw code. And a lot of you guys have done a lot of stuff with pre-draw. This right here is drawing the contents of that box. It's basically saying that here, if I'm in inventory state, draw the box. And you can set up when you want your box uh, to draw its, its, its contents or the box to be drawn. I'm just showing you the simple macros that we've used to handle this kind of thing. The reason it only drew one item is because I've told it to only draw one item. Number of items, the X starting offset position, the Y offset position, um, and that's from the top left corner of the box that you want to draw it in. Uh, the width of each item, the height of each item. So if you wanted to make items that were wider or taller, or maybe eight pixel items, very tiny items, but lots of them, um, you could set the size and the padding between each, um, vertical and horizontal. And then this is where we have what sprite is actually being drawn. We're handling that you know, through through a big array that we've created. But uh, it's actually pretty easy. So let's say now I want to draw two items and I'm going to just set them right at the top corner of the box, which is going to go right to the top left of that word relic. So let's just take a look at what happens if I do that. And there we go. And it went ahead and created them right here against the edge. All right. So now let's, uh, whoops. Let's do things like, so that was the, the offset positions and this was zero. That's what I meant to do. This was zero. So that will actually overwrite 
the word relics. Um, and let's give the padding, the horizontal padding. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. This right here, instead of just one eight by eight tile behind it, let's put three eight by eight tiles between the two items. So let's take a look at that. And you can see now they're up to the top left corner and they're spaced three apart. Okay, let's pull them back down to where we want to see them. So let's put them, let's put them all the way to the left, but let's put them, you know, maybe this will put them even lower than what I had them start with. And let's put, you can say, um, let's see, how many items per row. Right now I have four, let's put one, and now it'll stack them on top of each other. And so now it's stacked on top of each other because I've only got one per row, but I'm drawing two. All right, so you can see how much flexibility I'm getting out of just adjusting the values in the macros and not writing huge spans of code. And this allows me to make boxes that are different sizes for different purposes, uh, very easily just with a few lines of code. And you know, some conditionals, if this, then do that box, if that do that box, that kind of thing. Or if I press the A button, show me this box, if I press the B button, show me that box. Uh, if I'm in a box, and I press the B button, show me what happens if I pressed yes, and what happens if I press no, like there's unlimited ways I could think about using this. And I just kind of wanted to give you uh, a look at what we're working on with these box systems. Um, and also, you know, for mystic searches, what that means is, let's take a look at this again. Oops, sorry, not that this right here. So not only can I choose the different relic, when I actually press on one, it shows up here and we're going to make these graphics black and white in the HUD because we're only going to really be able to use black and white for them. But if I change, it changes the graphic and they have different effects. So for instance, right now, um, because there's no monsters on the screen, if I have this, nothing, nothing's really different. And I'm trying to do the uh, double stomp here and I can't, and I'm trying to sprint and I don't, but check this out. If I get the, sh the running shoes, now, if I hold B, I sprint, and that might be a little faster than we want, but also uh, I can do the power stomp. So that's what that relic allows me to do once I find that relic. Also, for instance, uh, this relic here allows you to float, and it's going to take away your magic when you do. So it allows you to float, um, and it's probably going to descend a little bit as you float, but that's the idea that that relic allows you to do that by just holding the A button. It gives you sort of a floaty animation. Um, so yeah, uh, I just wanted to sort of show you guys where we're going with, with the tool, uh, where we're going with Mystic Searches, uh, why we're doing some of the things that we're doing. And again, what's really cool is check this out because of the way that I'm setting this up, when I come back, no matter the changes I make, that's still present, uh, the whatever uh, destructible terrain that I created. But again, unfortunately, that's why with the scrolling game, it uses both of these name tables. So using this as a backup area to then restore won't work in a scrolling game. So a lot of things to, to uh, keep in, in, uh, in mind when you're de deciding, deciding what type of game you want to make and what mechanics you want to have and the ease of mechanics that you want to be able to make available to you, how much coding you're going to have to do, that kind of thing. This, we're trying to make an easy solution for this for certain modules uh, that'll work really well. Uh, but yeah, I hope you like that sort of small look at what's happening. If I can make a suggestion, there is a game on Kickstarter right now called Nescape. It is phenomenal. It is not a Nest Maker game. Uh, it is a game by one of uh, the... the Nest developers that we really support, uh, Kevin Hanley uh, from Kahan Games, Kahan Games. Um, very cool looking game, very unique puzzler. Uh, very excited to see that. And we know that you guys support all things Nest development, not just your own project and not just Nest Maker project. So um, go check out the thing if you can back it if you like what you see awesome um and definitely uh we'll be announcing the winners for the 2019 bite off competition very soon we have 
all the winners uh, from the judges. We have all of their videos with their uh, reveal of who the winners were and why, and we're putting that together right now. So uh, we'll be making an event on Facebook for when that's going to be, so please check that out. And yeah, I'm really happy to show you guys more progress, more updates, um, some of the things that we're including in Nest Maker, and a little bit of behind the scenes of Mystic Searches.